In this module, we will discuss the PCB layers, specifically focusing on layer stackup and management. With a new PCB, you manage the layer stackup by going to Design, Layer Stack Manager. First thing to note are the stackup, impedance, and via types tabs on the bottom in the Properties panel in the upper right corner. Another area to note is the Tools menu. Here you can manage the units, changing between metric, imperial, inches, and even microns. Just as a note, the industry is currently trending towards metric. Also available under the Tools menu is a list of preset layer stackups from 2 to 16 layer configurations. It's also important to note that there has been an increase in the need for routing on layers that also contain planes. While this cannot be done by adding plane layers, this can be accomplished using signal layers and polygons. We'll discuss planes and polygons in another module. A bit later, we'll take a look at the features section, which includes printed electronics, rigid flex, and pack drills, as well as the layer stack visualizer. For now, though, we'll take a look at the materials library. This area of the tool allows you to further manage impedance by choosing the specific material you will be using for your design. You may need to connect with your fabricator to verify which materials are available. As you see, you can manage the plating process, layer material, even conductive or non-conductive information for printed electronic materials. Next, we'll add a couple of layers and remove layers. This is done by selecting a layer in the stack up and right-clicking on it. Then choose Insert Layer above or below. For this example, we'll choose to insert the layer below, then choose for it to be a signal layer. Now we have a new signal layer named layer 1, and it's inserted below the layer we chose, along with the appropriate dielectric. You can also move a layer up or down in the stack up by right-clicking the layer and choosing Move Layer Up or Down. In order to change the layer name, select the appropriate layer and bring up the Properties panel. Here you can change the name value. For this example, we'll use S7. Note the changes reflected in the stack up. Also in the layer stack up, you can change the weight of the copper and the thickness for each layer. You can modify each of these fields by double clicking in the appropriate field and setting the value as you desire. Once you have your stack up configured to your needs and specifications, it's possible to save the stack up for reuse. This is done by going to the file menu and selecting Save Template As naming your file and saving it somewhere appropriate. This is considerably helpful when multiple designs use the same layer stack configuration. There are times when impedance control may be critical to your design, particularly in high-speed designs. With this in mind, the Stack Up Manager has a built-in impedance solver to assist with defining your layer properties. Let's take a quick look at this. In the bottom of the workspace window, we'll click on Impedance. This will load the impedance window. To start an impedance profile, click Add Impedance Profile. This will bring up the layers and allow you to view the current layer properties, as well as select which layers you want to manage the impedance profile for. In order to manage the values of the impedance profile, we'll use the Properties panel. As you can see, the default impedance is set for 50 ohms. As a simple example, we will adjust it to 70 ohms for our target impedance. This is done by simply inputting the value, and the solver identifies the new trace width. This will also be important for your design rules, as impedance profiles can be targeted in your rules setup. Finally, don't forget to apply this to the layers needed, by simply checking and unchecking the appropriate layer boxes. Next, we'll take a closer look at VIA types. Altium's intuitive system allows for quick and easy setup for your VIA types. We access VIA types by clicking the appropriate tab at the bottom of the workspace window. You'll note that the default through hole VIA is already in place. Next, we will add a couple of different VIA types. In the VIA types section of the workplace, you will add new VIA types by clicking the plus button. As a default, the VIA types start as a VIA from top layer to the next signal layer. Note when we add a third VIA type, the error warning appears on the new VIA type, as it's a duplicated VIA. Changing the VIA to connect from split 2 to S3 removes the error warning. We will now remove these VIA types and take a look at adding micro VIAs. Note that difference in symbol when changing from a standard VIA to a micro VIA. We also set the VIA to be mirrored so that the VIA type is repeated on the other side of the layer stackup. 
as we go through adding a few more via types, note that Altium assigns the appropriate name for the via type in the header for each via, and that these updates are available in real time. Next we will take a look at the features portion of the layer stack up, starting with printed electronics. As printed electronics are generated in a manner that is opposite standard fabrication, for example bottom layer first, it is important to be able to support this type of configuration for both design and output generation purposes. As you see, this is easily done by enabling the option for printed electronics, thus changing the stack up to reflect how printed electronics are generated as well as being able to lay out the design according to these needs and specifications. Altium Designer has a unique tool for visualizing the stack up, as well as giving you a real-time view of the layer stack, via types, and layer thicknesses. Using the layer stack visualizer, you can view the layer stacks, see via types in use, and rotate the view for a more accurate depiction of the internal structure of the PCB. And if you enable this option for real layers height, you'll see an accurate depiction of layer thickness. Next, we'll take a quick look at the rigid flex area of the PCB. Using the Bluetooth Sentinel example, we'll once again open the Layer Stack Manager by going to Design, Layer Stack Manager. As we enter the Layer Stack view for rigid and flex, you'll note that there is a drop-down box that allows us to choose either rigid or flex region. This is due to the board already having these two stackups in the design. In order to add additional stackups to your design, you click the plus symbol at the top of the workspace near the stack region. In order to manage the names and properties of the board region, we will use the properties panel. Here we can modify the board region name as well as assigning the region to be flex or rigid. Also note that changing the region name is reflected in the drop down menu. We are able to create and manage board regions in board planning mode, which can be entered by going to view board planning mode or pressing 1 as a hotkey. As you can see, regions have already been assigned to different areas of the PCB based on design needs. We further discuss how to define these regions in another module. One of the main purposes of Rigid Flex is the ability to bend the PCB. This becomes very helpful for verifying component clearance, final board assembly, and assuring that MCAD needs are met for mechanical design constraints. In order to accomplish this, we will use a combination of our 3D layout mode and PCB panel. Entering the 3D view by either going to view, 3D layout mode, or pressing 3 as the hotkey, we can now see the PCB in 3D layout mode. Once in 3D layout mode, select panels in the bottom right corner and select PCB to load the PCB panel. In the PCB panel, click the drop down menu and choose layer stack regions. Now we will fold the board using the slider under Fold State. As you move the slider, you will see the PCB bend and fold. Finally, being 100% folded with the slider is all the way to the right. Now we can take a closer look at the board in a folded state, checking for component clearances and ensuring a final shape that meets your mechanical design needs. To further support MCAD collaboration, Altium Designer has the ability to create step files. Step files are able to be imported into mechanical design tools such as SolidWorks and Creo for review by a mechanical engineer. In order to export your PCB as a step file, ensure the PCB is open and active. Under the file menu, choose export, browse down and select step 3D. Provide a file name and click save. The step export dialog will allow you to configure the step file options such as the folded rate, components with 3D bodies, including simple or generic 3D models, pad holes, and component suffixes. Once configured, click OK and the file is saved and ready to be sent to your mechanical engineer. This concludes our module on PCB layers. In this module, we reviewed the layer stack manager, including adding and removing layers, layer properties, multiple layer stacks, rigid flex design, material libraries, and step exports. Please complete the exercise titled PCB Layers.